so uh, this is uh, lecture 11 and uh, in this particular lecture uh, i will talk about a different aspect of a mos amplifier uh, in fact uh, over the last few uh, lectures uh, i have been talking about the different types of uh, common source uh, amplifier involving mos devices and in the entire discussion i have mainly focused on the expression of the voltage gain so it was something like that so if i observe the amplifier like a black box and uh, let us assume that the, this particular amplifier is uh, supposed to provide some higher voltage output in response to a voltage in V in and so far uh, we have uh, calculated the expression for AV the voltage gain that is equal to V out upon V in remember that both V out and V in these are the small signal in connection to uh, this particular model so what I mean to say is that uh, we have a situation like this let me have uh, a different color. We have a situation like this. Suppose the V input looks something like that, having some fluctuation with respect to time. And in the output side, what do you expect is the corresponding fluctuation is magnified. So we have seen that uh, for a common source kind of topology, there is a 180 degree phase difference between the input and the output. However, uh, the fluctuation has been enhanced. So if this one, this peak to peak fluctuation, if this is given by say delta V or delta V2, and suppose this one is given by delta V1, this fluctuation over here is given by delta V1, then the expression for AV is nothing but delta V2 upon delta V1. So we are interested in magnifying the difference. However, uh, for a common source kind of topology, uh, we have already observed that there is a phase difference between the input and the output. So the in, if the input signal is having a phase of zero degree, uh, then the output signal will be having a phase of 180 degree. Okay. So this is one of the important aspects of any voltage amplifier. Uh, we would try to increase the voltage gain so that we can use it for different applications. And accordingly, uh, we have come across the different expression for the voltage gain. So to start with, uh, we have seen that uh, with a discrete resistance, the value of the voltage gain is given by minus Gm times Rd. If I have a discrete resistor connected between the drain and the supply, then the expression of the voltage gain was something like that. And in the second attempt, what we have done is we have replaced this resistor by means of a current source load. So for that, we have obtained the small signal voltage gain, something like that, minus Gm1 multiplied with R1 parallel R2, if I include the channel length modulation or the impact of the channel length modulation. Here also you can consider uh, this uh, can be written as uh, minus Gm times RO parallel RD if I want to include the impact of channel length modulation. And in the third attempt what we have done is uh, we have uh, considered so in the third attempt we have considered a diode connected load for which the expression was something like that minus GM1 and then we have the parallel combination of three different resistance one is one upon gm2 then you have ro2 these two are coming from the load itself and obviously we will be having ro1 so these are the expressions for the voltage gain for the different uh, configurations that we have considered so far now so far we have just neglected the notion of the input and the output impedance 
And if you have studied the bipolar junction amplifier in the previous semester, uh, you have noticed that apart from the voltage gain or the current gain, the input and the output impedance, they are also playing some vital role in selecting the particular amplifier for your applications. Now today, uh, what we have planned is uh, we have uh, tried to give you some uh, idea regarding how to calculate the input and the output impedance for a MOS amplifier. Now, although I'm saying the term impedance, but remember, uh, so far uh, we have uh, restricted our discussion in the small signal in, in the lower frequency range so that the impact of the capacitors can be simply neglected. So we can identify the roles of the MOS amplifiers in determining the corresponding input and the output impedances. Now to start with, uh, let me just uh, uh, consider a typical uh, MOS amplifier which looks something like that. An NMOS device for which the source is connected to ground and obviously we will be having some bias voltage to bias this gate source terminal and then we have this input signal. So let me call this one to be V1. This is the small signal V in. And let me start with, with the discrete register RD. This one is VDD. And we are supposed to take the output from this terminal that is V out. So that is the simplest uh, common source uh, amplifier, MOS amplifier, what we have discussed in some previous lectures. Now the Question is how can you identify the input impedance of this particular device or of this particular amplifier. So how to find out the input resistance or input impedance of any amplifier. Now we have some generic rule based on which you can calculate the input resistance provided by this amplifier structure. What is that common notion? Now, if I observe the amplifier as a black box, suppose this is my amplifier. I don't know what is there inside. So this is the amplifier which we are talking about. Now we have to observe this as a two port device, two port uh, network like this. We have some input port, we have some output port. If I uh, connect some input voltage over here at the input node, then obviously we will be getting some output voltage over here at the output node. Now to calculate the input impedance, the generic strategy is you need to connect some external voltage source outside like this. You need to connect some external voltage source from outside. Let, let this be called Vx. And before doing that, what you need to do is you have to make all the independent sources to be zero. So make all the independent source, make all independent sources zero. So what do you mean by the term zero? That means make them inactive, make them inactive. So if I have some independent voltage source, if I have some independent voltage source, then this independent voltage source is being replaced by short circuit. And if I have some independent current source, then this independent current source will be replaced by the open circuit. That means their impact will be absent. And then you connect some external voltage source like Vx and you try to measure what is the current being drawn by the amplifier itself, let it be Ix. And then the input resistance Rn is nothing but the ratio of Vx upon Ix. That is the notion 
of calculating the input resistance for an amplifier. Now what will be the scenario for calculating the output resistance? What will be the generic structure? Now in order to calculate the output resistance of any amplifier, what we normally do is we do the reverse action. That means in order to calculate the input resistance we have connected some signal at the input node and we have calculated whatever the current being drawn by this particular amplifier circuit. Now in order to calculate the output resistance for any amplifier, the generic notion is that once again you have to identify the two nodes. I mean if I want to observe the amplifier as a two port network. So this is my input port, this one is the output port and once again you have to do this that means make all the independent sources make all independent sources zero that means inactive and then what you need to do is you have to connect some voltage source the output node like this let it be Vx and let the current being drawn by the amplifier is given by Ix. Now this time what I have done is I have connected this voltage source the test voltage at the output port not in the input port and once again you measure the current what is the current being drawn by the amplifier circuit and then the ratio of these two is nothing but the output resistance Vx upon Ix. So this is the common strategy that you have to follow every time you need to calculate the input and the output resistance of any amplifier circuit. Now with this basic understanding let us uh, move to the first amplifier circuit that we have uh, shown in this particular slide. Now let me go to the next slide. So uh, the circuit is something like that. We have uh, two voltage source one is the constant battery and second one is the small signal V in which is connected to the gate of the MOS amplifier like this source is connected to ground hard ground DC ground and you have a resistance like this and this one is a supply power supply VDD and you're supposed to take the output from this terminal. Now the Calculation of the input resistance is very simple for this particular case. Now while calculating the input resistance, one, once again you have to do one thing. You have to make all the independent voltage source to be equal to zero. So now in this particular structure, you have two different independent voltage source. One is the supply VDD and second one is the V1 that is the bias voltage. So you have to make them zero. You have to make them inactive or you have to make them short circuited so that their impact is not seen. Then what you need to do is that you have to connect this test voltage at the input side of this particular device and try to measure what is the current being drawn by the circuit itself. Now here the test voltage V in is connected. Here the test voltage V in is connected between the gate and the source and the current which is supposed to be drawn by the circuit is nothing but the gate current that will flow through this terminal. Now you know for a MOS device you have a capacitor, you have an oxide layer which acts like a capacitor between the gate and the channel. So between the gate and the channel you have an oxide layer which acts like an insulator. So in the low frequency operations if I consider the frequency very small in the range of few tens of hertz or so then the impedance provided by the capacitor is pretty large and as a matter of fact there is almost no current being drawn by the circuit itself. So for this kind of architecture what you have whatever be the value of this input signal V in the corresponding current being drawn by the circuit is equal to zero. So the biggest advantage that you are getting out of this is that 
the input resistance r in is ideally infinite and that is the biggest advantage of this mos amplifier r in is ideally infinite because the gate current gate current is ideally zero so for this kind of topology or with a current source load or diode connected load you have seen the same thing that means the input resistance is ideally infinite and that is the scenario for the lower frequency operation however if you increase the frequency operation to few kilohertz or few tens of kilohertz or even large then you find that this capacitor which is there between the gate to source and gate to drain they can draw some amount of current but that current is also negligibly small so now you are in a position to calculate the output resistance for this kind of amplifier so how to find out the output resistance now in order to calculate the output resistance we need to take the help of the small signal model so let me first draw the small signal model for this structure so uh, you have to identify the three um, terminals of the mos device get source and the drain so these are the three terminals so this is the gate terminal this is the source this one is the source terminal and this one is a drain terminal so these are the three terminals now between gate to source what you have you have a voltage difference let let it be called like v1 so obviously you must be having some current source connected between drain and source and whose value is given by gm times v1 remember this current source cannot be made zero or cannot be made inactive because this is a dependent current source so the value of this current source depends upon the voltage difference between the gate and the source terminal so in the last slide we have mentioned that we have to make all the independent voltage source to be inactive not the dependent one so this one is a dependent voltage dependent current source so you cannot make it zero or you cannot make it inactive so this is all about the structure so uh, we have left uh, one part that is uh, the output resistance which is connected between the drain and the source and whose value is given by r not so this is all about the mos device itself now in this particular structure what we have found is we have uh, this signal v in which is connected between the gate and the source and remember this voltage is an independent voltage source so we have to make it inactive so we have to make it zero so since it's a voltage source so how to make it zero we can make it short circuit like this for the purpose of calculating the input resistance or the output resistance the notion is that in order to calculate the input or the output resistance you have to make all the independent voltage source and the current source to be inactive now here while calculating the output resistance we need to make all the independent voltage source to be inactive now this v in is connected in this circuit externally between the gate and the source between the gate and the ground terminal so we have to make it inactive but remember v out is not connected so we are just measuring the voltage at this particular node so there is a difference between this v in and v out we have connected some input voltage some signal source between the gate and the ground but here we have not connected anything we are just measuring what is the amount of the voltage and then uh, what is left we need to connect some text voltage over here some text voltage over here let it be like this any voltage between the drain terminal and the source terminal which is nothing but the output port for this particular architecture let it be vx and the current being drawn be ix we have missed one part we need to connect rd how to connect rd rd is connected between the drain and the ac ground because vdd is at ac ground so we need to connect this one as well so this will complete the overall small signal model 
So now, if you just uh, closely observe this particular small signal circuit, then you can find that since V1 is equal to 0 because gate and source are connected, so therefore V1 must be equal to 0. Now since V1 is equal to 0, so therefore this GMV1, that current source is also V1 is equal to 0, which implies this current source GMV1 is also equal to 0. That means what? If the, if the amplitude of this current source is equal to 0, that means these two terminals are meant open circuited. Between these two, this, you have no connection. Between this point to this point, through this current source, because the value equal to 0. So what you are left with? You are left with these two resistances, R0 and Rd, which are connected in shunt path. So you have provided a voltage like Vx and you are going to measure a current like Ix and you have two resistances like R0 and Rd. So it's quite apparent that the value of this particular resistance is given by so Vx upon Ix is nothing but R0 parallel Rd. So this is the output resistance of a common source amplifier with discrete resistor. So you have some discrete resistor Rd and under this condition the expression of the output resistance is given by R0 parallel Rd and normally the value of Rd cannot be that large like R0. So this is this particular parallel combination is essentially governed by the value of Rd. So now if we uh, move on to the uh, next uh, circuit uh, in which case we have connected one PMOS current source as a load and we have found that uh, the expression of the voltage gain uh, can be enhanced to certain extent because that time you have GM times R1 parallel R2 so that the voltage gain can be enhanced to a certain extent. Now what about the output resistance for this kind of circuit? Because once again the input resistance will be infinite because the input is connected at the gate and gate is insulated from the channel by means of a silicon dioxide layer. So what we have is uh, something like this. The input side is essentially the same. So this one is essentially the same. You have uh, V1 like this. Or what I can do is I can uh, simply go to the small signal model so that uh, because ultimately uh, that can be removed. So I can directly connect these two points together in the small signal equivalent circuit and what we have is we have a PMOS device used as a load and you know that uh, there is a certain bias voltage which must be there. Let me call this one to be say V0 and this is the VDD and we are taking the output from this particular terminal. Let us assume for the timing that uh, VIN is riding on a DC so that uh, it can provide the corresponding bias. Let us assume that VIN uh, is something like that. It is riding on a DC so that you need not provide any kind of bias. Suppose this is the variation of the input. It is riding on a DC. Okay. And just uh, take a look at the polarity of this particular voltage source V0, which is there to pass the PMOS device. So let me call this device to be say M1 and this device to be say M2. So once again, uh, you understand that uh, the corresponding input resistance provided by this particular amplifier circuit must be equal to infinite because uh, the input is connected to the gate terminal and gate is isolated from the channel through a insulator silicon dioxide layer 
So the current being drawn by this amplifier is negligibly small and the input resistance is equal to infinite. Now we are interested in uh, finding out the output resistance for this kind of circuit. So how to find out the output resistance. So once again we need to follow the same strategy that we have done before. Let us now uh, try to identify the different terminals. Suppose these are the three terminals for the MOS M1. Let it be G1, let it be S1, let it be D1. Now between these two, we consider that let the voltage difference between V1 and accordingly uh, we have a dependent current source given by Gm1 times V1. And obviously we will be having some resistance R01, the output resistance because of the channel length modulation R01 between the drain 1 and say source 1 of this MOS M1. Now the drain of these two MOS they are connected together drain 1 and drain 2. So what we have we can directly drawn like this or what you can do is uh, I can also draw uh, the small signal model for the second MOS on the top of this. So let it be something like that. Let this be the drain terminal, this be the gate terminal and this be the source terminal. Let me mark this one is D2, this one is S2 and this one is G2. Okay, so as you know, for this particular MOS M2, what we have in the small signal model, gate and the source, they are having a same potential, same DC potential. Uh, sorry, uh, the difference is V0. So for the second MOS M2, what we have? Vg2 minus, uh, let me just uh, mark it over here. For this particular MOS, second MOS, the source is at a higher potential with respect to the gate. So Vs2 minus Vg2 that is equal to V0. So they are separated by a constant DC voltage that is equal to V0 so that this particular MOS is properly biased. The MOS is turned on and it is biased in the saturation region. However, if you just uh, find out this difference, every time you will find that the difference between the source 2 and the gate 2 remaining same. So in the small signal equivalent model, the gate and source they are connected together and source is already connected to VDD which is nothing but an AC ground. So ultimately these two terminals they are connected together they are connected together to some AC ground potential. Similarly the source one is also connected to the DC ground which is also an AC ground. Now since this gate source voltage difference, small signal voltage difference is equal to 0 for the MOS2, so we don't have Gm2 times V2. I may also regard this one like this, suppose this difference equal to V2 and between drain and source we have a current source like this. Gm2 times V2, but the value of Vt is equal to 0. What else? We have another resistance RO2 which is connected between drain 2 and the source 2. So this one is RO2. And moreover, these drain 1 and drain 2, they are connected together. So we have a connection like this. And 
another part is left we need to make this particular voltage to be inactive because this is an independent voltage source so i need to make it inactive now we are making this voltage inactive only for the calculation of the output resistance otherwise not so that part is over now we have to apply some test voltage from the outside between this two terminal let this voltage given by vx and let the current being drawn is ix now if you closely observe here since this particular independent voltage source v in is equal to zero is inactive so therefore v1 is equal to zero which implies gm1 times v1 is also equal to zero and that is true only for this output resistance calculation now what happens for this p mos now drain and source sorry gate and source they are having a fixed voltage difference and that is given by v0 vs2 minus vg2 is equal to v0 and that is high enough it must be greater than the modulus of the threshold voltage so that the device is turned on and the value of v0 is selected in such a way that the device turns on in the saturation region that means the device is operating m2 is operating in the saturation region so that you can have an almost constant current because ultimately you are using this device mos m2 as a current source type of load however if you just measure this voltage difference between these two terminal source 2 and the gate 2 g2 and s2 so their difference every time it is constant and that is equal to v0 so in the small signal sense there is no difference between these two terminal so that's why in the small signal equivalent circuit they are connected together and that happens every time you deal with a circuit like this so v2 is also zero universally for this kind of circuit and which implies gm2 v2 is also zero so now your circuit is much more simple what you have you have this resistance ro1 going from drain to ac ground and this resistance ro2 going from drain to ac ground so whenever you feed a voltage like this vx and if the current being drawn is given by ix then obviously this particular voltage source test voltage experiences two resistances connected in parallel one is ro1 second one is ro2 so therefore for this kind of circuit if you just measure this vx upon ix so this is nothing but ro1 parallel ro2 and that is larger with respect to the previous one last time we have calculated it was uh, to be uh, r0 parallel rd and which is generally governed by rd because rd is small with respect to r0 and this time we have ro1 parallel ro2 now this is the output resistance of the two mos device which are normally large with respect to some discrete resistor so this particular output resistance is typically large with respect to what we have got in the last case so that is the condition or that is the expression for the output resistance for a common source amplifier with a current source load and in the last lecture uh, we have also considered a third type of amplifier in which case we have considered a diode connected load so let me just uh, show you the once again show you the circuit diagram for this kind of uh, topology in which case you have two nmos lower on is acting as an amplifying device and the upper on is acting as a load and gate and drain of this device they are connected together and we are providing input signal between the gate and the source of the first mos the amplifying mos and this mos m2 is acting as a load a diode connected load so once again you understand that the input resistance are in 
is going to be infinity because uh, input is applied at the gate and gate is isolated electrical isolated from the channel region so the next question is how to find out the corresponding output resistance so we do the same thing we have to once again carry out the same exercise that you have done before now before doing this uh, exercise uh, once again uh, let me just uh, show you uh, this particular device the upper mos n mos in isolation basically we have a situation like this a diode connected load gate and drain of these two of this particular mos they are connected together and you have a situation like this then ultimately this mos m2 all that's a three terminal device but since the gate and drain they are connected together so ultimately it reduces to be a two terminal device and in the last class we have already calculated the resistance provided by this kind of circuit this kind of device for which the gate terminal and the drain terminal they are connected together so this is nothing but so this is equivalent to of having a resistance between these two nodes whose value is nothing but whose value so equivalently it works like a resistor for which the value of r is given by 1 upon gm2 in parallel with ro2 so equivalently instead of having uh, this particular combination on the top of this device m1 what i can do is i can simply put this resistor that will help me in calculating the output resistance of this particular structure however uh, we need to draw the other parts and that is quite obvious this one is the gate gate 1 source 1 and drain 1 let this difference be v1 and uh, between drain and source you have dependent current source gm times v1 and you have ro1 like this now as you can understand between these two terminal between this point and this point you have this resistance whose value is given by r or let me write like r dash now r dash is connected between this drain 1 and this drain 2 now the drain 2 is connected to vdd and vdd signifies ac ground in the small signal equivalent circuit and s1 is already at ac ground so equivalently what i can do is i can connect this resistance r dash between d1 and s1 in fact that terminal is given by uh, let me mark that terminal is given by s1 d1 and s1 they are connected to get, sorry uh, this should be s2 this should be s2 d1 and s2 they are at the same potential and s1 and d2 they are also at same potential and that value is given by r dash and i need to make this independent voltage source to be active which is connected between the gate and the source like this so that arrangement is over now what i can do is i have to connect some test voltage from the outside like this whose value is given by say vx and let the current being drawn by m is ix so once again uh, we find that v1 is equal to 0 which simplifies like this gm v1 is inactive open circuit so then once again you have two different resistances ro1 and r dash as seen by this particular test voltage vx 
So if you just calculate the ratio of these two Vx upon Ix, that turns out to be RO1 parallel R dashed and that is equal to 1 upon GM2 parallel RO1 in parallel with RO2. Now you have the parallel combination of three registers 1 upon GM2, RO1 and RO2. Typically the value of the output resistance RO1 and RO2 they are typically large and this particular combination 1 upon GM2 parallel RO1 parallel RO2 is generally governed is generally dominated by this factor 1 upon GM2 unlike the last two cases. You don't have 1 upon gm in neither of these two expressions you have r0 parallel rd in the first expression and you have r1 parallel r2 in the second expression so you don't have 1 upon gm2 in either of these two expressions now since we have 1 upon gm2 uh, in this particular expressions as one of the important parameter in the output resistance so the output resistance is given by 1 upon gm2 parallel r1 parallel r2 and for an approximate calculation uh, you can make this one to be approximated to be 1 upon gm2 because this is the lowest value out of these three. So with this uh, I would like to uh, end uh, my today's discussion on calculating the input and the output resistance of a common source amplifier.